The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, otherwise known as NOAA, has just released a new report that the head of the agency calls a bit of a wake-up call for the U.S. The new sea level rise report showing our country's coastline could experience as much sea level rise in the next 30 years as it experienced over the span of the entire last century. To help us understand all of this, let's bring in ABC News meteorologist Melissa Griffin. All right, so Melissa, let's talk about just high tide flooding becoming more common. And what does this report mean and show us about what to expect in the coming decades? Yeah, Kira, you know, this troubling report really kind of brings to light what we can expect in the coming decades, especially up to 2050, which is some of these maps I'm going to be showing you. But first off, I want to just kind of explain what exactly is high tide flooding and why we're seeing it occur more frequently than we have in the past. So what you can attribute to high tide flooding is sea level rise, and that's one of the biggest contributions. But first of all, high tide flooding, it is defined as the overflow of ocean water, that excess accumulation of water moving on to low-lying areas. It can inundate streets. It even can bubble up in storm drains. And what we're seeing is that you no longer need to have a major coastal storm to experience this kind of devastating flooding. It can happen on bright sunny days and that's what catches people off guard. It can be anything regular just like a change in wind direction, perhaps even a change in ocean currents or even just a new or full moon. And that is the biggest issue is that we are seeing this more and more frequently without these storms. Sea level rise, one of the biggest contributions to that, but also we do have to take into consideration the sinking land and that loss of those natural barriers. But I want to show you the map here because this is in the last 20 years. We have seen about 150% increase in acceleration of the amount of high tide flooding days across our coastal regions. 2005, this is an average. We see all those white dots. That is about zero to five high tide flooding days. Some spots didn't see any. Some spots even only saw up to five. Remember, this was only 22 years ago. Now I want to bring you into the future. What we're projecting with the projections of the sea level rising, what we think we could see by 2050. This is 45 to 70 days on average of those high tide flooding events across our coastal communities. You can see some of those bright reds along the Gulf Coast, especially up into the Mid-Atlantic and the Eastern Seaboard. Those are the areas I am most concerned about, Kira. Well, these findings, you know, they couldn't be more timely right now as we've seen the devastating flooding across the country, people dying, uh, homes being destroyed, communities underwater. So let's talk about just our American cities and which ones are facing the most severe risk right now. I am most concerned as of right now on these current projections and in our current forecast from NOAA, it's along the Gulf Coast and especially the Eastern Seaboard. You can see here two places, two locations saw record high tide flooding days just in the past year. One is Spring Maid Pier, that's near Myrtle Beach, 11 of those high tide flooding days, and that tied the record. Up in Delaware, Reedy Point, six high tide flooding events, those both breaking records over the last year. And what we're seeing is that 150% increase compared to the year 2000. Remember when we saw zero to five flooding days? We're seeing that go up by two in the next couple of years, but even in the next year, just between 2022 and 2023. Now, it's not the entire country that in this actual forecast that could see those high tide flooding days increase. We also are watching the effects of La Nina for parts of the Pacific Coast. So they could actually be below average. So that's where you got that average coming in. So I wanna show you this map because this is the actual forecast. Remember, three to seven days is the forecast, but it's an average. So because there will be less days in the Pacific due to the effects of La Nina, that's going to bring the average down. I am going to say that in the mid-Atlantic, some of those areas could see over 10 high tide flooding days. That's where you see those lighter, those darker color oranges. And of course, down in the Gulf of Mexico, places like Texas, Louisiana, those coastal areas will see the increase in frequency of those high tide flooding days as well. I'm most concerned, Houston to New Orleans, up through the mid-Atlantic region, coastal Virginia into Delaware. That's the areas we're going to see those high tide flooding days increase in the future, starting this year. All right. Good information to have. Melissa Griffin, appreciate it. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.